together. We're going to sing of all the great things he's done. Come on, let's worship. Jesus, 
our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great. sing this together. We're not enough without him. Because I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? All we want today. Because all I want is all you As I walk.
Jesus, maybe you're here this morning and you just feel dry. You just feel parched in need of more of the Spirit of God today. I just believe he's saying to you that if you would just lift your heart to him, that he wants to fill you today. He wants to refresh you and strengthen you again in his presence that's here. So receive that word today. We receive it, God. Mm. Hear the word roaring asunder with a new future to tell. For the dry season is over, there is a cloud beginning to swell. Oh, I see it, Jesus. I see it, Lord. So look to the skies, heavy with blessing. Lift your eyes and offer your heart. Jesus Christ, hope in the heavens, now we receive the Spirit of God. We receive your
the promise to come everything that you have spoken will come to pass let it be Let's seek the Lord this morning. Let's give Him, let's give Him the praise of our hearts. Jesus promised us, ask and you'll receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Let's take a moment right now. Let's, let's knock on that door. Let's ask and seek God's presence for the things that are on your heart. Maybe you came in this morning with a burden. Would you just lift that to the Lord this morning? Would you say, Jesus... The answer lies in you. What I need lies in you. Jesus, we pray that you would move across our congregation, that you would touch each one that is participating with us this morning online. Lord, you know our needs before we even ask. We're overwhelmed by your presence. We sense your presence this morning. You're calling us to you. You invite us close. And Lord, we pray that We could just lay down any burden, any worry that we have. And we just lift our needs to you, Jesus. And we say, you are our source. You are the answer. You're our provider. Jesus, today we look to you. We look to you. We receive from you that rain, that cloud of your presence, that glory that comes with your Holy Spirit in our lives. We receive from you. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Amen. God's presence is so good. It's a privilege to be able to gather together, experience that that presence together. So glad that you're worshiping with us today. If you're if you're watching from home, we just encourage you, don't let anything distract you. Just enter into what God has for you today. He's going to speak into your life. He's going to make a difference in your life today. We're looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. Are you? For God to do something new in your life today? All right. Well, if you're here in the room, uh, just take a second, turn around, wave at somebody, greet somebody, tell them you're glad uh, you're here. I know we're distanced a little bit, but it's great to be here this morning. And then you can have a seat, and we're going to see some video announcements. Hello there. It is a great day here at River City Church. My name is Abby. If you are a first time guest, I want to say welcome. We are so excited to connect with you. You can help us do that right now by texting the word connect to 765-300-4345. If you're here in person, you could also just grab the connection card that is at your seat and fill it out. Before you leave today, take that card directly across the lobby to the guest connections counter where we have a small gift for you. Now, if you have not been here in person, we want you to know that you can join us at our Lafayette campus on Sundays at either 9 or 11 a.m. Visit our website at rivercity.info and click on the red banner at the top of the page to find details of all precautions we are taking for your health and those around you. Next, growth track is something very important to us here at River City. 
Growth Track takes place at 11 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall each week. Today is week two. It provides an interactive workshop where you will discover how God has uniquely designed you. Don't miss it. That's it for this week. Don't forget to share this service through text or social media so we can continue to share the good news of Jesus. See you next week. Good morning, everybody. I, uh, I, I, I'm, I've been encouraged these last few weeks. We've since we had our, our family meeting a couple of weeks ago and we put into place a, a plan to call everyone who's in our database. Uh, for the last few weeks, we've seen more people here each Sunday since, since before uh, the, the, the shutdown of our in-person services happened in March. And I, I just want to say thank you for, uh, if you've been a part of that, thank you. If you've been a part of just asking people to, to come back Many people have, have told me that uh, the phone call or the invitation from a person who's, who comes to church here every week has been something that prompted them to, to take that step and to get back into the habit. And so I, I, I just want to let you know that's working, that's happening, and uh, I, I just, uh, I, I'm grateful that also at this time that we're seeing people who were here before return, we're seeing a lot of people in our midst who, who are new to our church. They, they found us on, online, they found us on the internet, uh, or, or they just started to look for a church over the last several months, simply because of all the things that have been happening. And I'm grateful for that and for the, for the part that we get to play in people's lives. And right now, we're, gonna take a, we're just going to take a moment to pray over our, our general generosity here at River City Church because uh, the, the, the regular giving of the people in this church, that's what makes the ministries here happen. That's what makes uh, it possible that, the, that there's still a church here and that the ministries that are here are, are strong and in place in order, to, in order to reach out to people with the love of Jesus. And of course, I uh, just want to remind you there are a lot of different ways that you can give. Maybe you've already given somehow uh, through, through some means like the mail or our offering boxes that are here. Maybe you're doing it online or through our website, whatever the case is. Thank you. Let's take a moment to pray right now about those gifts. Father, we thank you for the chance that you're, you're, you're bringing people back together. You're regathering us as a church. We pray that you continue to do that. God, we pray about this whole situation that we find ourselves in uh, where we are, we are looking to a future where we can like, not think about a virus every single day. But we ask you today that you would use our gifts and our giving to somehow build your kingdom. God, to me, it's astounding that you want to use our generosity to help, uh, to help build uh, the population of heaven, to change people's lives, to, to bring compassion to people right now who are in need, but that's exactly what you do. And so, Lord, as we give gifts today, or any day of the week, at whatever time it happens, God, we pray, use our generosity to build your kingdom. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hey, Today is Pastor Appreciation Sunday, and uh, here at River City Church, that means that we, we take time to honor our pastoral staff, and that doesn't include me, the lead pastor, it's the rest of the pastors here that we just want to, I, I want to I point your attention to, and what we do is we receive an offering especially for these folks. Um, we, we, want to, we want to honor them because... They deserve honor. I just want to, I just want to speak to you for a few moments about about each of these people. They they appear in alphabetical order. Seems the the easiest way to do that. So you know, it's uh, it's not that one person is more important than the next. They're they're all key to us. And the first person who appears is Pastor Jamie Doyle. Pastor Jamie and Jennifer. There are there are children's ministries pastors. There they are with their kids. 
And uh, what, what is great about this family, of course, is that all three of their children are heavily involved in their ministry with them. And uh, the, if you know anything about the children's ministry, you know uh, about the way this family ministers to our children together. But I wanted you to be aware of something else. And that, that's that this year, of course, has been a very unique time for everybody. It's, had an imp- it's made an impact on everybody. And for Pastor Jamie and Jennifer, if we could just see their picture again, Pastor Jamie and Jennifer, they are, they are people who, who had to adapt real fast to the situation that we were in um, when, when that shutdown happened from March until May. Um, these people developed something they, they'd never done before. They developed their, their children's ministry online. They started making videos every week. They started putting lessons out there. And th- these are things that continue t- to now. They're, they're still doing this, uh, this kind of ministry. And they, they found all kinds of unique ways to reach out. I just want for you to recognize something. Because sometimes people, they got the wrong idea about churches. When we weren't open, some people thought, oh, well, I, I guess the people at the church, they got an extra break. No, it actually took a whole lot more work. And uh, I'm just so grateful for the Doyle family that they responded in the way that they did. The, ne- the next pastor I want us to focus on appears again alphabetically, and that's Terry Gilbert and Ebony. They, they're uh, directing the community center, and of course the community center has, has become even more important this year in the sense that the, the compassionate outreach that happens to our community center has increased. We've seen a threefold increase, for example, in our, in our food pantry. More and more people have come needing those kinds of supplies. I'll never forget uh, when, when uh, Convoy of Hope came to the community center, not just, a, not just a month or so ago, but back in the spring, and the traffic was backed up out on old US 231 and down all the roads, and people weren't happy about that, but it was backed up because there were so many people trying to get there to receive the supplies that were coming through Convoy of Hope. And again and again, Pastor Terry, he's... He's been uh, in the center of that and in, in getting those resources coordinated and in leading uh, on those, at those times and being a part of all this kind of distribution and ministry, I'm grateful for it. And of course, Ebony, she, uh, she's, she's very active in our, in our worship ministry that's here. She, she makes uh, a difference many Sunday mornings of the year just, just in being up here and being a person who is, who is active in our worship team. Next person I want to mention is Lisa Glazer. Lisa Glazer, um, she's not only our outreach pastor, but she's, she's the executive director of our daycare ministry, both Adventure Station and STEAM Academy. And during this time, uh, when, whenever that shutdown happened, one thing that didn't shut down, the government has allowed daycares, child care centers to remain open. And um, what, what that meant was that Lisa and her team had to adjust in a whole lot of different ways, adjust in ways that they, they never imagined they would have to. And uh, it was also stress because many people pulled their children out of the daycare and out of STEAM Academy because because they weren't they 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 weren't going anywhere for work and so so there were all kinds of challenges that came about at that time and I'm grateful for Lisa and the way that she led and the way that uh, she she really demonstrated real faith and and I, I would say that there were many weeks where I was aware that, that she was working 12 or more hours a day every single day of the week to keep things going, to keep things working and in place. And uh, again, I'm, just, I, I'm so grateful for 
uh, I, I'm grateful for her, her leadership. I'm grateful for the way that she, she uh, has, ha, has, in every way, shown what a, what a leader is, but also a person who really leans on God, on his help, on his strength, on his power in the midst of crisis. Somebody else who has made a difference here for a long time, he actually, he's, he's uh, I think the youngest person who's part of our pastoral staff, but he has the most seniority, and that's Adam Howard. Pastor Adam and Sarah, they, uh, they, they, they contribute to the church in a lot of different ways, but of course, Pastor Adam is our worship pastor, and um, he is also the pastor of our West Lafayette campus, which, which we're looking to see reopen in a new location, in a, in a building. You're going to hear more about that in the, next, in the next few weeks, but that will reopen after the first of the year. But Pastor Adam, when, when the entire shutdown happened, I'm, just, I'm referencing that a lot because that time for, for several months and even through today has brought extra... Uh, work, extra, extra burden and stress on all the pastors here at our church. And what, what was incredible is that, of course, we had a lot of the infrastructure set up thanks to Pastor Adam and his faithfulness through the years to be able to, to go online and to be able to produce all kinds of content to keep our church connected. But beyond that, we, we got the opportunity right around Easter to start to put our, our, our services back on television, on Fox 16. And you know, that never would have happened if it weren't for Pastor Adam, for his efforts, for his expertise, for knowing what needed to be done. And to this day, he's still editing that program each week. This is... Of course, in addition to the, to the other things he's doing, but I am grateful for him. And I want you to know, uh, like the others, Pastor Adam has worked extremely hard. And many of you who know him well, uh, you know that this year was particularly hard for him in losing his mother, uh, who had been struggling for a long time with Alzheimer's disease. But she... but But... Even in the midst of that, I, I, just, I, I just have to say, uh, incredible, I, I'm incredibly grateful to serve along with Pastor Adam and Sarah. And last on our list, but he's not least, is Pastor Todd and Amanda Tyson, our executive pastor. You know, when, when this, when particularly uh, this year, earlier this year, and when the, our shutdown happened, there were a whole lot of things that had to change immediately. There were all kinds of communication things that needed to change immediately. Things that needed developed that we hadn't done before. And many of those things are directly touched by Pastor Todd. He's involved with all kinds of uh, the, the administration behind our, our, our operations, our buildings, our our finances, our personnel, and our communications. And like the other people that I mentioned, Pastor Todd stepped up to a whole higher level of functioning, of, of working, the hours that he was putting in. And I just want you to know this because these aren't things that you would know unless you were here. But I just want you to know that Pastor Todd and Amanda, just like the rest of these people, they weren't just working really, really hard. But they were, they were praying really, really hard for all of you. And so today, when I, when I invite you to, to give to the, to, the pastoral, uh, to the Pastor Appreciation Offering, I'm, I'm inviting you to give in such a way that recognizes the effort of these people on your part. And so today, you know, we're going we're gonna to take a moment to pray. And then I'd just like to, to ask you to express your appreciation for these folks 
just let them know right here, right now, after we pray, how much they mean to you. Not only in terms of the offering, but let's just take a moment to express appreciation because all of them deserve our honor. Let's take a moment to pray. Father, thanks so much for each pastor and pastor's spouse and family that we, we heard about today. Thank you, God, that you've given us these gifts and these people, that you called them into ministry, and that, that right uh, when we needed them in ways to function like maybe they never expected and we never expected, they did. And so God, today we pray your blessing on their families, on their marriages, on their health. God, we pray today your blessing on their ministries as they, as they seek to, to uh, express your love, your gospel. God, we pray that they would be filled with your Holy Spirit. God, we pray that you would continue to give them vision uh, from your spirit for our future as a church and for their future in your kingdom. God, thank you for the chance to bless these choice servants of yours. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, we're grateful for our pastors. Would you let them know that? Well, right now we're going we're gonna to move into the message, but I think we, we've got a short video here as we get some things in place. Well, today we're, we're on part two of a series on Jonah, as you saw there in that quick video. And Jonah, Jonah's this 10-minute book. You can read it in about 10 minutes, maybe less, in the Old Testament. He's one of the minor prophets. It's not because he was uh, somehow shorter or uh, somehow less important. It's just that his book is shorter than some of the others, the major prophets, so Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. These are the major prophets. And then the minor prophets, they're clustered together. There are these little books. Maybe you know them, maybe you don't. Jonah is probably the best known of the minor prophets. His story is one that's captured the imaginations of, of so many people all over the world. And... Um, I'm just going to review the story a little bit from last week, and then we're going to jump into chapter 2. In, in chapter 1, we read last week, the word of the Lord came to Jonah and told him to go to Nineveh and to preach against it because their wickedness had, had come to the attention of God. And as you, as you read that, it's, it's fairly clear what Jonah should have done. He should have started out right away going to Nineveh. But instead, he goes in the opposite direction, just about as far away in the world as Jonah could think of to get away from Nineveh. He headed to Tarshish. He got on board a ship. He went to sleep. And then a storm came. God sent a storm on the sea. So bad that the pagan sailors started to call on their gods and uh, they started to throw things overboard. They, they thought they were going to perish. And finally, the captain of the ship comes to Jonah, wakes him up because he's sleeping. They're all praying, but he's sleeping in the bottom of the ship and says, and says to him, hey, why don't you pray? 
because uh, maybe your God will hear us. And then it, it comes about that they come to understand Jonah is the one responsible for the storm. And even though they don't want to do it, they, they ask Jonah, what should they do to fix this situation? Jonah says, throw me overboard. Then the, then the storm's going to calm down. Then the sea will become peaceful. They don't want to do it. They try and find ways to avoid it. But eventually they throw him over the ship, the side of the ship, anyway. And we finished last week with this amazing short verse that, that God, the Lord, provided a great fish who came and swallowed Jonah up. That's where the story, that's where we left off in the story. Today we're picking up in Jonah chapter 2. He spends three days and three nights in the belly of the, sh of the fish. And Jonah, Jonah is, uh, I, I can only imagine what his situation is. We don't really know. There's a lot of movies out there that kind of like cloud my thinking when I read this book, you know. Those of you who like know Nora and, or Dora and uh, you know about Nemo and so on, you've got all kinds of ideas about what happens in, in the sea and inside fish creatures, but I mean, we don't know what was going on with him, whether he's drowning half the time or he's just standing on the bottom of this huge fish. We don't really know. But there in the fish, Jonah repents. Jonah gives this prayer. It's a poem right here in chapter 2. And that's, that's what we're going to look at today. How Jonah repented. And it's going to give us some ideas about repentance in our own lives. Look at verse 1 of chapter 2. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God and he said, In my distress... I called to the Lord. Go ahead and circle this word distress. This word distress is an interesting one in the, in the Hebrew language. That word distress, it has to do with like labor pains. Now, every time that I start talking about labor pains, every, every woman who's had a baby starts thinking and saying, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And believe me, I don't. But... But I can remember when uh, my wife was in labor, she was in great distress. One of the things that comforted her was she wanted me to sing to her. And so there I was singing, you know, great is thy faithfulness and amazing grace to my wife in the delivery room. And uh, the nurses kind of looked at each other and said, wow, we never saw this before. This is really different. But that's the kind of pain and trouble that Jonah is finding himself in. That's the kind of distress that he's in. He's overwhelmed with his, the, the mess that he's in. It's painful. It's, it's something that has caused him to look up. And you know, that's what pain does. Pain often causes us to look to God. It's almost, like, it's almost like a reflex. That when we experience pain, when we're in distress, we start calling out to God. I'm in my distress, I call the Lord, and He answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, uh, you know, this, this phrase, the realm of the dead, it's, it's kind of too many words for one. I like how the King James Version says this. It says, from hell I called for help. This is, this is Sheol. This is the, the Hebrew word Sheol. It, it's the place where dead people go. And, and Jonah feels like, you know, for whatever reason, it's just kind of been put on hold, his demise. Deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. 
you hurled me into the depths. You know, Jonah was not actually hurled by God into the depths. These, these sailors threw him into the sea. But he rightly recognizes that God was guiding his steps. That God was the one who was taking him in the direction and in the sequence of events that he found himself in. In fact, when, when Jonah is thrown into, that, in, into the sea, it's the first time he starts heading in the right direction. He, it's the first time he starts heading in the direction of Nineveh. Because he was, he was running away from it before then. You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas, and the currents swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. You know, I don't know what the waves and breakers are in your life. I don't know what kind of things have come into your life that have been trouble or that have been like waves of labor pain to you. But Jonah, Jonah, he, he feels all of that and what it does is it turns him to change. And the, the, the biblical word for change is repentance. Repentance has to do with changing or turning. In fact, the, the Hebrew word for repent, it simply means to turn. The, the, it's a turning of your mind. Repentance is a turning of your, of your heart and your attitudes. Repentance is a turning of your words and your will. That's what repentance is. And one of the things that I just want to point out to you today is this, is that repentance often happens in the context of pain and failure. You've heard about jailhouse conversions? Why is it that prisoners are willing to come to Jesus and turn away from their life of crime, it's because often pain and failure, they're like the ingredients to great repentance. And in, in Jonah's situation, I, I can imagine that he only thinks he's going to die. But here in Jonah 2, he starts, he starts praying. You know, it, it amazes me how often people say, things are so bad, they're so bad, all you can do is pray. I, I imagine that's insulting to God. Scripture says, the, the writer of the Hebrews, uh, the letter of the Hebrews in the New Testament says that we can go boldly before the throne of grace. So prayer, prayer it, it may feel at times like a last-dish last effort, but in fact, there's great power in prayer. Jonah, Jonah he, he's, he's calling on God. He's, he, he's, he's calling to him out of his distress. And he's, he's in the middle of a situation that he feels is like hell itself. And... And that's where he's praying from. He's helpless. He's desperate. He's afraid. He's hurting. And so he calls on God. You know, some of us here today, some of us listening, I'm certain of it. We find ourselves in the midst of the same kind of distress Maybe it's that you, you find yourself hurting in a kind of in, in a kind of place of, 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 of terrible misery in terms of relationships. Maybe it's misery in terms of your, your marriage. Maybe you find yourself in inescapable misery just from like your physical. Uh, your physical condition. I, I, don't know, I don't know what it might be. 
But there's great news today. And that is that that as Jonah called to God out of his helpless state, a state where he couldn't do anything to fix it or make it better, Jonah says that God heard him. God heard him. You know, it, it seems to me when I think about Jonah that God could have made it easier for Jonah. Right? Like, he could have sent a really cool, big turtle who could talk up to him and just said, Jonah, just get on my back and I'm going to take you right to Nineveh. That would have been nicer. He could have maybe like taken a nap on the way on the turtle. You're thinking, wow, this is so weird. But it is. I mean, God, God put him inside a fish. That's pretty weird too, right? And, and then, or, or maybe like he could have sent him a mermaid. Fully clothed, of course. But he could have sent him a mermaid. And, and, and the mermaid could have said, hey, you know, just, just hold on to my arm here and I'm going to take you all the way to Nineveh. But that's not what God did. God, God put him someplace that was painful. God put him in a place that was dark. It probably stunk. God put him in a place where he wasn't certain he was going to live for the next three days. God let some misery sink in. You know, it's not always that the trouble or the pain or the, the misery or the failure that you're facing is from God. But often, there's no other way that you're going to take the important steps to change that you need to take without it. Sometimes, Sometimes people, when they, they come to me in the midst of the worst problems that they've ever faced in their lives, and they say to me something like, why, why did it have to come to this? Why couldn't God just have told me some other way? Or why, why, couldn't, I, why, why couldn't I just like change on my own? I don't know. It could be that the power of sin is so deep and so insidious that the only way that we will meaningfully turn from it is, is, is when we are hurting so badly and so deeply. But here's the mistake that many people make with failure and pain. When it could lead them to repentance, it could take them closer to God, they decide they're going to become bitter about the pain. Painful things turn many people to blaming God. And I just want to encourage you today, if you find yourself today in a labor pain kind of moment, you find yourself today in distress, I want to, I want to challenge you today Turn to God in desperation. Turn to God in desperation because for you to get bitter about your pain, for you to decide that, that, that God is, is not recognizing you or pouring out enough blessings on you because of the, the, the good life that you've tried to live or whatever it is, <clears throat> or because you knew someone who didn't, who's done far worse than you, who doesn't seem like they've ever had to pay for anything they've ever done, just, just stop trying to reason about it like that. And throw yourself at God's grace. You know what I've found in my life? It's that the worst troubles in my life, the worst things that I've gone through, some of them I brought on myself. Many of them I didn't bring them on myself in any way that I can reasonably say like it was my fault. 
But what I can say is that the worst troubles in my life have been windows. Windows through which I've seen God's care and love for me the most deeply. If you're, if you're in the middle of the travail of this kind of Jonah experience, if you're going through something hard, if you find yourself in the pit, turn to God. Verse 6, Jonah chapter 2, it says, to the roots of the mountains I sank down. He's thrown right into the sea, right? He's grabbed by this fish and he goes, it seems, to the bottom of the sea. He says, the, the earth beneath Barred me in forever, but you. I don't know. I, I don't know if you have those moments in your life, or if you've if you've ever experienced it. But he he was absolutely at the end of his rope. Jonah was absolutely at the end of his hope. His story looked like it was over forever. And that he would be forgotten forever. But God. But God. I don't know if you've had times like that in your life. But God moments. But I just want to challenge you today to recognize. That no matter. No matter. Where you are, God, God has saving power that goes beyond what you think is possible. He says, but you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pit. The lights had gone out. He never thought he'd get out. But instead, Jonah here, he says, but you, God, you brought my life up from the pit. He says, when my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good and I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. Salvation comes from the Lord. You know, nothing we do plays any part in our salvation. A lot of times, particularly, you know, as Protestants, Protestant Christians, we, we have this idea that, that somehow um, I, can, I can, even though, even though our, our theology tells us something different, many of us have the idea that we can simply try harder and God will be more saving of us. But in fact, salvation belongs to to the Lord alone. It, it comes from Him alone. Jonah, Jonah was pretty awful here. But God has the power to save him. God's, Jonah's not going to be able to do anything to, to make it better. He, he starts thinking about how he wants to give a sacrifice at the temple. He starts thinking about how he wants to make vows to God at the temple. That's what he's mentioning in the, in the verse before this. But, but salvation, it comes from the Lord. It's something that God alone has the power to grant. And I, I, guess, I, I guess I just want you to think about it like this today. It's that, it's that we play no part in saving ourselves, but saving grace is God's answer to sincere repentance. What, 
what, what am I getting at here? It's that, it's that if you repent, if you, if, if you turn from your sin, or you turn from your despair, or you'll turn from your bitterness, the way that God answers that kind of turning is with saving grace. Saving grace is to say that this is, this is a givingness, the good givingness of God that, that you don't deserve. That's what saving grace is. God, God, God brings blessing to our lives not because we deserved it, but it's because He's good. It's because he alone has, has, has the, the resources and the will toward us that, that he wants to love and bless us. Now, here Jonah is in the bottom of this fish, and he is... He, he is uh, Run, he's been running as far as he can from what God wants of him. And you know, Jonah, he's, he's calling out to God from the pit. And you could imagine that God would just say, Jonah, you're, you're in the pit and you kind of put yourself there. You can imagine that maybe God would laugh at at Jonah's knees. But in fact, he, he doesn't do that. God answers Jonah's sin. And Jonah's prayer of repentance here with relief. So many people that I talk to, they, they are reluctant to believe in the gospel and, and really ask Jesus in because... They've got it in their heads that somehow they don't deserve it. But that's the point of the gospel. That's the point of the good news. It's, it's, it's graciousness. It's goodness. It's mercy from God that we don't deserve. Look at verse 10. And the Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. There Jonah was in, 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 in these labor pains of misery and distress. And he, he spit out. He's almost like he's born again all over again, only it's the ugliest thing like this you've ever seen. And next week, we'll, we'll look at how he, he, just, he just goes right into Nineveh. And he does exactly what he's supposed to do. But unfortunately, Jonah's, Jonah's heart isn't changed in the way that it needs to be. But nonetheless, the Lord, the Lord has mercy on him by getting him out of this fish, getting him onto dry land, and giving him another chance to do the right thing. When I read this story, I am just, I, I almost can't believe it. Because part of what it's telling us is something about God's tenderness. It's, it's telling us something about God's, God's willingness to understand how messed up I am and you are. This story is telling us something about God's willingness to be, to be tender with us in the face of our sins. Some of us, we, we really like the story of God's judgment. We, we, we really take pleasure in the thought that God is angry with somebody else. Or that God is not going to put up with sin forever. No, he won't. Judgment will eventually come. But, 
this really isn't a story about judgment. It seems like often in the Bible, God takes almost no time to really convince us that He's serious about judgment. He has to take a lot of time to convince us that He's serious about mercy. Not, not in my outline here or anything, but if God's merciful like that, then, then if there's somebody you need to be merciful to, you better figure it out. Because if, if you're willing to receive mercy like this, you're, you're, you're willing to receive the second, third, and millionth chance that you do from God because He's merciful then I guess you need to figure out how to be merciful yourself. What, what, what do I think, what, what, what's the observation I have here at the end of this chapter? It's that God's mercy is mightier than you can imagine. Because, because you might feel like you're, you're so awful, you, you, can't, you can't really, you don't really think that, that God truly accepts you as you are. Maybe, maybe you're the kind of person who, who, who you know, you, you, you receive the good news, you, you believe in Jesus, but, but you think you need to do a bunch of other things so that you're sure you make it in. Salvation belongs to the Lord. And God's mercy will never find a match in human sin or evil. Right now, right now in our country, everything that's going on, there are a whole lot of Christians, in particular Christian leaders with large megaphones, suggesting that, you know, it's all about judgment, and it's all about the end. And, and some Christians concern me, because when they talk about these things, they seem to be giddy at that prospect. But God's mercy is greater than His judgment. God's mercy toward you, God's mercy toward your neighbor... God's mercy toward, toward the people on the other side of the political argument. God's mercy is greater than His desire to bring judgment on them. And that very reality, it ought to change our hearts. It ought to not only make us willing to willing to turn to God and to receive His mercy, but it ought to make us more patient with those that we're certain deserve God's judgment. Jonah, he's got, he's got so much to say to us. He's got so much to show us. Jonah not only shows us what it's like to disobey last week. This week, Jonah talks to us about what it means to change deep down. Today, today I, I want to encourage you, no matter where you are, no matter who you are, turn to the Lord. Find His mercy grace if you would just bow your head with me let's let's pray father today as we are as we are focused on you and as our as our hearts right now are turning to you god we we recognize that that we need we need for you to do more work in our hearts Some of us can, can scarcely believe in mercy. 
Some of us are, are, are expecting that you're going to bring judgment on us or you're going to bring judgment on somebody else and we can't imagine even that you have mercy that's greater, stronger, more powerful than our sin. God, for some of us today, we're, we're in the middle of the distress of failure, of pain, of, of loss. We're in the middle of distress directly because of our sin. Some of us, God, that's right where we are. And I just pray today that, that you'd help each person who's in that situation to turn to you. To find, to find that you hear us from the pit. No matter how far we run from you, you keep inviting us back home. Now, there are others of us here today, God, we, we somehow, we get mixed up in our, in our thinking about what's going on in our world, and we, we so want for you to intervene, and, and sometimes the very first way that we think that, that we, we, we think needs to happen is, is by some cataclysmic judgment, but God, we want to pray today instead for our world, that they would find the repentance that we're going to read about next week that Nineveh found. We want to pray, God, for our world that, that somehow, some way, that there would be a turning to You. A turning away from sin. Some of us, God, we're, we're dealing with people who live real close to us, maybe even in our own homes, or they're in our own families, and, and we are so frustrated with, their, with, with the pit that they're in. God, today we pray that they would turn and find mercy, that they turn and find the salvation that comes from You alone. We can't do anything to add to how You would save us. It belongs to You alone, God. We pray, God, let their hearts turn. Father, Father, we, we just want to, we just want to today uh, be encouraged by the fact that you, you, you sometimes let us fall into the deepest part of trouble so that we'll look to You and find help. And today, God, no matter who we are, no matter where we're at, I thank You that we can reach out to You and we can be lifted. We pray it in Jesus' name. As your head's bowed, your eyes are closed right there. I just wonder if there are those that are listening right now and you'd say, you know, I need to find mercy from God. I need to find salvation from God through Jesus. And you want to reach out to Jesus right now and invite Him to come into your life. You want to, you want to commit or recommit your life to Jesus. You want to take that step right here, right now. And if that's you, if you're here in the room, just, just go ahead and lift up your hand right where you are. If you want to take that step, you're watching, you're watching online, I, I just want to invite you, go ahead and, and text the word decision to that number at the bottom of the screen. Right now. And, and if that's the step you're wanting to take right now, it's real simple. You just, just pray like this. You just, you just pray like this. You say, Father, I believe in Jesus, that He died for my sins, and I am sorry for my sins, I pray that you'd forgive me. I pray that you'd save me. I give you my life, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's that simple. It's that simple. If you took that step today, 
make sure on your way out you drop your connection card at our, at our connections counter out there. We have some, some things to send you about next steps. If you text in that word decision to that number that's on the screen, we'll send you some, some next steps so that your prayer can become a changed life. I'd like to ask you, if you would, go ahead and stand with me. And um, as you're standing, prayer teams are coming to the front right now. And, and so, like, as we lift a song to God, um, it's about... about being washed and being cleansed. If, if, you, if you have, if you'd like to receive prayer about anything at all, just step out from where you are. Find one of these prayer teams here uh, to pray with. They'd love to be able to lift up your needs to God with you. The rest of us, let's just lift up our, let's lift up our voice. Let's give thanks for the, the complete nature of God's forgiveness, God's cleansing. You stepped into my grave, taking all my guilt and shame, and all my fears were stripped away. Now I stand and sing, I am washed by the blood of the Lamb. I am washed by the blood of the Lamb. By
Father, that's what we're praying today. That's what we're remembering. That you have you have everything that we need in order to be cleansed, in order to be free, in order to be forgiven. Turn to you today, God. Enlarge our hearts to know you have enough mercy for us. And we pray in Jesus' name. Listen, as you go today, uh, if you're interested in learning more about our candidates for the youth ministry or the student ministries pastor here, uh, there's going to be a meeting with Jake and Emma Toller. Those are our candidates. That's happening in the loft. That's at the top of the stairs. That's just off the lobby here, and uh, that's going to start momentarily. And so, if you're interested in learning more about them, if either you have students or your parent or you just want to know what's going on at your church, head right up there. As you go from here, may the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. Amen.